one more like group of work. We'll probably do the test on 10 one and then the preview chapter and then make, cause I have to do the test in two weeks. Um, and then maybe like do an, um, a quiz after that. We'll see. Um, if your grades are good where they're at, I might not do that last quiz cause we only need two. Um, but your, this is brand new to you. This is 10 one is brand new to you, but the rest of it is all review, which is the good news. Okay. So a three dimensional coordinate system is exactly what it sounds like. It's a coordinate system that has a third, um, a third variable, which is a Z. So notice that if you look at just this picture, the X is running right and left. The Y is running up and down like it normally does, but then the Z is running forward and backwards. So it's introducing a three dimensional, uh, fig a three dimensional to our normal two dimensional, uh, coordinate grid. So the hardest thing about this is trying to teach a three dimensional thing on a two dimensional surface, right? So if you go to the, um, if you go to Canvas and you go to the module, there's something that says 3D Grapher, and it's a website that's like this. So this is a little bit, I mean, if, it, if you could see it, you can see that you can kind of move this graph around and you can see it gives it dimensions. So if I were to plot points, so if I come out here on the left and I added a point, it's going to give me three points. So let's say I made X three, notice that it's moving and normally X is, let's make it the way it normally is. X is usually over here on the side. The Y is usually up and down and the Z, oh, let's twist this around. The Z is normally forwards and back. Oh, let me just reset this one. I completely flipped it. <laughs> Hang on. Bring it back to normal. Okay, so the X, again, is usually left or right. The Y is usually up and down. And notice the plus means, like, that's the positive part. The negative is the negative part. Um, and then the Z kind of goes forward and backwards. So if I did that Y or the X to be 3, notice it's moving to the right. So the further I move it to the right, it's going to go the higher value of X. If I move it to the left and make it negative just like it would normally go left or right, that's where it's going. So let me put it back to positive, let's just go positive three. Now let's say I wanted to move it up above this coordinate grid, that's my Y, so I can move it up. And then if I wanna move it forwards or back, that's my Z. So if I wanted to move this forward, it looks like it's moving left, but it's actually coming forward over the X or the Z line. So like I said, it's kinda of hard to teach a two dimension, a three dimensional thing on a two-dimensional surface but if you could feel like it was coming forward towards you that's what the x that's what the z values are going to do so by definition a three-dimensional coordinate system um to, to graph it you're going to identify the point in space so again you've got that third dimension uh the geometry of this three-dimensional model is actually called solid analytical geometry so this is where um the separation between pre-calc honors advance and pre-calc analytical that's where they, it gets its name is they they dive a little bit deeper into this stuff so we're not gonna we're just gonna like kind of scratch the surface so you can construct a 3d coordinate system by passing z axis perpendicular to the x and y axis at the origin so what we're normally used to the x and y take it and draw something from the front to the back of it uh, the figure below shows the positive portion of each coordinate. So if I moved to the right on the X and I moved up on the Y and I moved forward on the Z, I'd get this front right quad quadrant over here. Um, it says taken as pairs, the X ax the axis determined three coordinate places and the X Y plane would be the plane that you would get from where the X and the Y coordinate it's me or the X and the Y um, lines intersect. So this time they actually turned it and rotated it forward because the Z is going up and down. The YZ plane is the plane that would contain both Y and Z and the XY plane is the plane that would contain both pink, both the, um, the X and the Z. So you don't just stress about like, you don't have to draw this out. I will t teach you how to plot the points and then we're gonna talk about how to find midpoint and distance. So the coordinate points, uh, planes separate in three dimensional coordinate system into eight, they're called octants. So instead of it just being four quadrants, it's actually eight octants. If you could picture like a Rubik's cube, if you were to divide it um, through the center on all of the sides, it would divide it into eight little cubes, right? And the, what they call these octants. So if I were to just look at this, this, this is octant one back here.
that's that's just one of the eight octaves. So each of those different coordinates bring forth out into that space into one of the octaves. So, I mean, you're not going to have to like know what those octaves, where they are. It's not like I'm going to ask you to plot something and then label the octant. Don't, it's not, nothing like that. Just a vocab term that you might see. So the first octant is the one in which all three coordinates are positive. So if I move to the right and I move up and I move forward, that's putting me in the first octant. And the point P is the space determined by the order triple X, Y, Z. So the order letter, the numbers go in that order X and then Y and then Z. So if you were to look at this example here, this coordinate here would have been made by going to the right on X. So it would have been a positive X. It would have been made by going up on the Z. So it's a positive Z and forward on the Y. So it's a positive Y. So if you're moving right up or forward, it's positive. If you're moving left, back, or down, it's negative. All those would be negative coordinates. Okay, so this one says determine... Oh, I always forget that this has the answers on here. Okay, I don't think yours does, right? This says determine which is the point 2, negative 3, 3 in the coordinate plane. So if I went 2, this would be my X. And you're saying positive 2, which means start from the point in the middle. My x-axis is here. Remember, it can move around. So if I wanted to go positive, I'd have to move forward two places. That would be the x of a 2. Then you've got y being negative 3. The y is here. If it's positive, you're going to move to the right. If it's negative, you're going to move to the left. 1, 2, 3. There would be a negative 3. And the last one is if z is 3... So if Z is up here, positive, now moving up one, two, three, and there's that coordinate point. So you could see two different ways. One, here's the graph, give me the coordinates. Two, here's the coordinates, give me the graph. So if you look at the other examples that are here, like this one is negative two, six, and two. So the X is negative two, which means you went back on this X axis. The 6 is the Y, so we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right. And then the Z is the 2 we went up to, and that's how you got that point. This coordinate point is 2, 2, negative 3. So I went forward on the X again. I went right on the Y, and I went down on the Z. And this last one is 1, 4, 0. Went, to the right, went forward 1, went to the right 4 and didn't go up or down at all. So this would lay on that flat plane. Okay, so now we're gonna plot the point. So notice where the axes are. X is actually forward on this one. The Y's are right and left and the Z is up and down. So if I wanna plot negative one, three, four, then I'm gonna go on my X axis, which is here and I'm gonna move back one place. So if I start here, I'm gonna move it back one place. That's where I'd start. The three is positive and it's on the Y. So now I'm gonna to move to the right three. Now I'm not going one, two, three and putting my point here. You actually have to move three units parallel to that Y axis. So it's kind of on a slant. So now I'm here. And then the end result is up four. So one, two, now notice this is four from down here. So it's one, two, three, four. And there's a negative one, three, four. The, the one is negative. So the very first one, I went back. Right, so that was the negative one, then to the right, one, two, three, and then up, one, two, three, four. So it's a positive four. Does that make sense? Okay, then D is one, three, two. So now I'm gonna move forward one again. I'm gonna move to the right three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna move up two, one, two. 
one, three, two. And then the last one is two, negative one, four. So two, move forward two. Negative four means I'm moving left one and up four. One, two, three, four. So this was C. This was D. And the last one's E. questions on that one. So I actually think plotting of the points is the hardest part of this lesson because it's a little abstract. They're not perfect. You have to kind of, for me, when I, if I were to ask you to graph this by hand, I would ask you to actually give me these little scoops and then I know how many places you intended to move. That's the easiest way to be clear about that. All right, here's the easy part is that, and then we're going to stop, is that to find distance and midpoint, which are the other two things you're gonna find with these coordinate points, you already know these formulas, we're just adding on a third part. So distance, if we know it as it is, is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now we just add on the z's. So we add on z2 minus z1 squared. So all three parentheses go underneath the square root. And then midpoint, as you already know it, is this x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Now we add on the z's, z1 plus z2 over 2. That's it. All right, so then this one is distance and midpoint. So for the distance, we're going to do the square root of x two minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Here's my x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. And it doesn't matter which ones are the ones and the twos as long as you're consistent. So I get the square root of one minus zero squared plus four minus one squared plus negative two minus three squared. One squared plus three squared plus negative five squared, one plus nine plus 25, 10 plus 25, which is 35, only breaks down to seven and five, so it's gonna stay that way. There's the distance between those points. And then the second one is the midpoint. So I'm gonna add the two X's, zero plus one over two. Add the two Y's, one plus four over two. Add the two Z's, three plus negative two over two. One half, five halves, one half. And there's your midpoint. Part, sorry, is the equation of a sphere. So we know the equation of a circle, right? X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Now we've got a sphere just adds, and there's my third variable, which is Z minus j. Don't ask me why it goes hkj. Nothing makes sense with those letters, but that's the way it works. So if I gave you a center and a point, you could find the radius. If I gave you the center and the radius, you could find a point or the equation. So really what happens is this, the way this is written is with the square root, but when you go to write it in standard form, just like with your circle. This is what it would look like. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared plus Z minus J squared equals R squared. So this is that last equation. If you were to square both sides of it, you would get the standard form, which is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared plus Z minus J squared equals R squared, where H, K, J is the center and the radius is R. So if I get a question like this, it says find the standard equation of the sphere with the center. This would be my H, this would be my K, this would be my J, and there's my radius. So X minus two squared plus Y minus a negative becomes plus four squared plus Z minus a negative five becomes plus five squared equals the radius squared, which would be nine. 
there's the standard equation of the sphere. This last one is find the center and the radius of the sphere given by, now notice this is not in standard form. This is back to our completing the square. So we're gonna group the X's together, leave the space for what fills, group the Y's together, leave the space, group the Z's together, and bump the 10 to the other side. Now we'll take the four, divide it by two, that's two squared, and it's two, it's four, so I'm gonna add that here, and also over here, I get x plus two squared. Go to the next one, take the two, divide it by two, it's one squared, it's one. Add the one here, add the one here, y minus one this time, squared. And take the z, which is eight, Divide it by two, that's four. Four squared is 16, add it here and here. And I get z plus four squared equals negative 10 plus four, that's negative six, plus one, that's negative five, plus 16, that's 11. There's my equation. My center would be negative two, one, negative four, and the radius would be the square root of 11.